Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to calculate the fast convolution in GNU Octave. The convolution is one of the most important tools in signal processing. So imagine um, the use case you have a, a finite impulse response filter or infinite impulse response filter and you want to calculate the output signal if a signal is going into the filter. Let's say you have a, a low pass or a high pass filter and you want to filter a signal with it. So how to do it? Yeah, you do it using the convolution. The convolution is producing you the output signal of a signal fed into a filter. In the digital domain, a filter, for example, finite impulse response filter is a vector and um, applying the filter to the signal means convolving the input signal with the filter with the filter vector and there are two ways to calculate the convolution one using the time domain there's a um a convolutional sum which is a formula and uh, this this type of operation is very inefficient for large signals. Large means, as a rule of thumb, if the signals are longer than 128 and 28 samples, then it's easier or it's much more efficient um, to calculate the convolution in the frequency domain. That's why it's called fast convolution because it's faster than the time domain solution. But yeah, only for longer signals. And the longer the signals, the, the, the higher the efficiency. And um, because the convolution will be calculated in the frequency domain, we will use the discrete Fourier transform or um, the efficient implementation of it, the fast Fourier transform. So let's directly head over to Octave and clear our workspace variables, close all windows and clear our command window. First, we need two signals that we can convolve with each other. Let's create two random, random vectors, x random row vectors with five elements, x and y, 1.5. So, convolving two signals in Octave is quite easy. There's the command called conf for, for convolution, and we have to pass the two signals that we want to convolve, like x and y, or input signal, and filter coefficient vector or whatever so and let's fire it up and here we see the output and now let's count the the, the length of the output vector here we have nine um, values in the output so our input signals are five five samples long each and the output is nine so the length of the convolution output is length vector x plus length vector y minus one. I will I will show you why it's important. So now let's create our fast convolution using the FFT command. I will call the result my set. And because it's a frequency domain approach we calculate the FFT of both signals X and Y that we want to convolve with each other and multiply the FFTs so it's FFT X multiplied with FFT Y the dot in front of the multiplication sign is telling Octave that um, we want to multiply each element with each other in the vectors and so now we have multiplied the FFTs and um, now we have to perform the inverse Fourier transform to go back to time domain and now we will compare the results and there will be something strange so let's fire it up so here it is the upper row shows us the result using the conf command and here we have our result my set and as you can see different lengths and also the results are different. So, why? 
because we made a failure. Using the fast convolution means uh, that if we want that our solution using the fast convolution produces the same result as, as the convolution command in, in, in Octave, we have to extend our signal length x and y to the length n. So the FFT will the FFT length will not be five signal length. We have to extend our signal to the length n, the length of x plus the length of y minus one. And if you pass the the length of the FFT to the FFT command, the FFT command will append zeros to the signal x to uh, reach the length of nine, which is n. Because here length x is five, but we need length nine, also the same for y, to produce the same result as the conf command. If we now fire up again our, our script, we will see, yes, now we have the same result. Let me just uh, take the real part of our signal to the, that the imaginary part vanishes, then it's easier for us to compare the results. And as we can see, yes, we have absolutely the same results using our self-made fast convolution. By the way, the conf command from Octave and also from MATLAB um, uh, internally is exactly calculating the fast convolution in that way. Also FFT from the one signal um, appended with zeros to match the length n, multiplied with the FFT of the second signal, also um, appended with zeros to match the length n. And um, the reason that we need this uh, zero padding is because of the periodic and non-periodic convolution stuff. I will talk about the theory maybe in another video. And now just for fun, let's, let's change the signal length of X to three. So now we have uh, two vectors with different length. And um, so length x is 3, length y is 5. Our convolution res result should be 3 plus 5, 8 minus 1, 7. So let's fire it up. And yes, our convolution result has length 7. And the results for the octave conf command and our self-made uh, convolution command are the same. And so, yeah. That's it. Just a quick and dirty way to calculate the fast convolution in Octave using the FFT command. I hope you liked the video. So if you have any wishes for other topics um, I should make a video about, let me know it in the comments below this video. And see you next time. Bye bye.